Welcome you to Porch Talk. This is your host, Alan. Hop in. Let's go to Mobile, Alabama. the episode before we start, let's go back to the summer of 2017. Porch Talk wasn't even a thought. I had felt like I was burning the candles at both ends to stay in Mobile. And I finally started burning phone lines down back to my home to find work because I was out of here. I was leaving. A friend of mine, Cam Lewis, called me. What are you doing? I'm just sitting here at the apartment twiddling my thumbs. Well, why you ain't doing nothing? You ought to get out to Dolphin Island, the Doherty's. Go catch this new band called the Red Clay Strays. I took his advice. And my goodness, it was good then, and it's even more polished, and it's better now. And it is so good to have them on the show Three of the five. Without further ado, here are the Red Clay Strays. What's up? I'm Drew Nix. And I'm and, Zach Rissell. And we're the Red Clay Strays. We're live here in uh, Mobile, Alabama. And this is called Bittersweet Memories. <laughs> My 
been in my head And I've been rewinding her for things that you said And reminiscing back when you were sweet to me That's what you call them bittersweet memories You call them bittersweet memories. <laughs> yes, sir. That was cool. Thank y'all so much for uh, taking the time for the show this evening to sit down with me. Yeah, dude. I'm and, excited. Uh, yeah. Just to uh, start us off, originally from Mobile, or I'm no. from Birmingham. Drew's from Birmingham. Everybody else is from Mobile. Yeah, born and raised for the most part. Mm -hmm. All right, so guys, just one at a time. Tell me a little bit about growing up and like just finding your way in music. Like, what were some of those earliest memories that you have of like just music just pulling you? Just like I gotta know how to play guitar. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, he was real big for me. My dad, my dad was huge into him when I was younger. He was always playing in the background as I was growing up. Just stuff that dude could do with the guitar like really blew my mind and uh, really made me want to be able to do that too or be my closest imitation of it one day maybe. <laughs> and uh, I just feel lucky to have gotten as far as I can and to have met the guys that I did to be able to do it with, man. Yeah. How about you, Drew? Stevie Ray was it for me too. It was my mom's boyfriend at the time who used to play in rock and roll bands and, and bars and stuff like that. But... Uh, he showed me Steve, one of Stevie Ray's cassettes or something like that, and I just I got obsessed, and it put me on all sorts of stuff like Guns N' Roses and all these hard rock bands and whatnot, and just becoming obsessed with guitar. I didn't really pick it up. I picked it up in like middle school, but then I put it down until college, until I had to start writing music for them because I was the only one <laughs> for real. So I just had to learn how to play guitar since yeah. then. Well, uh, tell a little bit about getting down here to Mobile. What led that? Oh man, that's a that's a story. Uh, <laughs> so I actually ended up glory days playing. Glory days, I, yeah. I went from high school. I went uh, got like kind of a scholarship to play football at Mississippi College, and after two years there of misery and being in a dry county and drinking so much and hating myself and. <laughs> Everybody I was around, <laughs> I uh, just got to a point where I partied too much and I got a DUI and I thought, hell, my career's over, so what do I want to do now? So then I went down and tried to be a football coach, so I like, started working at the University of South Alabama, mm -hmm. and uh, I was like, you know, it's serious politics and that, and I'm not a politician by any means, so I was just like, I met these dudes who, I, I met this guy named Turner. And uh, Turner put me on to Brandon, who's our lead singer now. Mm -hmm. And uh, things didn't work out with the first band that we started. But uh, I don't know. Since I met Brandon, I started. Uh, I met Andrew, our bass player, who was actually working with us at the time in mm -hmm. South Alabama for the athletic training staff. And uh, we started that band called Coleman Mason Band, and that didn't work out. And uh, we had hired John on. And that band broke up and then we hired Zach on and then I just because they found out I could sing harmonies they kind of just threw me on stage so yeah it was really kind of a sink or swim situation <laughs> it, was. Know, yeah. it was it was keep my app on one <laughs> until I could get my shit together yeah. is really what it was yeah so man what about you and just like uh those early moments when you were picking up the guitar and kind of finding your own way like uh man, what, was, what's that like it was really just kind of on a whim one day one summer I think I was 15 years old. I told my dad I wanted a guitar. It's like, all right. And I went down to the guitar center, bought one of those little shitty starter boxes. Yeah. It comes with a little guitar and amp and everything. And it was many summer nights playing really loud, annoying the shit out of my parents. And, <laughs> you know, just hashing things out, figuring out something that I'd want to learn to play. And then I'd spend as long as I needed to to tackle it. Mm. And, uh, you really, I spent a lot of time trying to find a band that was like like minded like me. They had a good work ethic. They wanted to go actually do the damn thing and take it seriously and whatnot. And uh, 
Yeah, then I found these guys, and we just hit the ground running, man. It was, like, the first few notes that I remember Zach hitting with Andy and John that I was like, all right, this is our dude that we're hiring. What's up, man? Brandon's here. How's it going? What's up? <laughs> player two has entered the... <laughs> player, player, player three has entered, 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 entered the ring. Uh, Hello, everybody. For those of you at home, this is uh, Brandon Coleman. All right, well, we got a third member now. we got Brandon joining us, man. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. And so we just really got it started. We were talking about... Um, you know those those early days of like musical influence like really what got you into music I've, I've always really been in music my parents uh used to listen to a lot of the old stuff my mom was more of a, a 90s early 2000 rap r&b <laughs> person yeah. mm -hmm. uh you know she listened to like toby mac and stuff like that but dad always listened to you know skinner zz top uh waylon johnny cash all the old older guys so I had a pretty good mix of both worlds, I guess. I got you. And so just when you started uh, just wanting to pursue music, like what, did, what was that kind of looking like for you at first as you were getting older, just coming out of high school in those early, early years? Well, it, it really I never really decided to pursue music. It was more of I just I wanted to start playing drums when I was eight. And, uh, hey, Drew, please pay attention. We are paying attention. You started playing <laughs> drums when you were eight. You've always been into music. I'm I'm joking. Joking. Drew, Drew's distracting me. I started playing drums when drinking. I was eight. And, uh... You know, eventually started playing guitar and piano, and so pretty much as soon as I learned learned how to play guitar, I've had some kind of band put together, playing yep. music somehow or another, whether it be on someone's back porch or or anywhere like that. And uh, you know, by by the end of high school, I had I'd done been through a, a, a few bands, but you know, at the end of my senior year, I had a pretty good band put together. Drew was the manager of it, and uh, you know, I just never really had the chance to think about college or. I, I didn't really want to go to college, but I, I never had the chance to do any of that because I've just been pretty much, you know, playing music as long as I could. Gotcha. As soon as I learned how to. Yeah, college was never on the table for me. Though. I didn't. I never really wanted it wasn't to go my to college. Thing. I shouldn't have gone, but that's how I met these guys. So yeah, I'm not regretting it. it. Worked out. Yeah, it worked out. An old college try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely a college try. <laughs> <laughs> So let's uh, let's talk about like just the forming of the strays. You talked about like previous band not working out and like so how did how did these names and these guys get together? How did the strays come together? That previous band uh, that's the one I started in high school. Uh, me and a friend, a mutual friend of Drew's. His they got was, Turner. His name was Turner. We had started a, a little duo, and uh, Drew Turner had got Drew on board. I didn't know Drew at the time, but Turner got Drew on board to book shows for us. And then uh, we decided to make a duo, a full band, and that we had got a, a drummer. He was a 65-year-old man. <laughs> and uh, hmm. we got Andrew and another guitar player. And so it was a five-piece. And uh, we played for almost two years with that band. Drew as the manager and booking agent. I got you. And guys, like, just the uh, first time I saw you was three years ago. I think you were just getting the ball rolling. It was out on Dolphin Island. Well, that's and, what uh, happens with that... Uh, that other band, our drummer, quit, mm -hmm. and so we auditioned a couple drummers, and that's where we met John. He come to the audition, mm -hmm. and uh, so John played with Coleman Mason Band for about two or three months, mm -hmm. technically. Uh, yeah, and you know John just Coleman Mason Band was kind of mediocre in a way. We just were inexperienced, didn't know what we were doing, and John had been playing rock and roll with his dad for like ten years, mm -hmm. and so he come in and he knew all the rules and the do's and the don'ts and showed us a thing or two, you know, and uh, and that's pretty much, you know, I guess what led to split in that band is uh, things people want to change and people didn't want yeah, to Yeah, I, I was wanting to, to learn more and to, you know, to expand and, you know, listen to what John had to say and yeah, some some other guys didn't, so, but I think, yeah, that's what started it was our drummer quit and we hired John, but yeah, once that band fell apart, we got Zach. Yeah, no. I was real, real good friends with John's little brother Jacob, who's a little keyboard wizard man. He's a badass dude. He plays with all kinds of bands around town. And uh, you know, me and Jacob, we went to high school together. So when I was first picking up guitar, you know, he gave me some pointers, and we, you know, kind of bounced stuff off of each other, and we're jamming around a good bit. And uh, Jacob, I think Jacob put in a good word with John for me or whatever, because I, I only know John as Jacob's big brother at the time. And he was always just, you know, around hanging out, like passed out in his bed, and we were pissing him off, waking him up and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, I think Jacob put in a good word for me. Then I came out, you know, to the, 
I guess my audition and I think I Pretty got much, the, yeah. I think I got the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, we we, interview, well, we auditioned someone before Zach. This guy knew our situation. I think he had saw the Coleman Mason band a couple times. Yeah. And he knew the band split up and he's like, hey. This dude was probably in his mid forties. He's like, I play a little guitar. I know I'm not in y'all's age, but y'all could just use me until you find someone your age. And uh, I'm I'm pretty good at guitar. And, I, and this guy hit me up at least three times a week for almost a month. Yeah. Finally, I didn't really want to audition him, but I finally auditioned him. And uh, uh, we played something. I think like Stevie Ray. Stevie Ray. We played something. Pride and Joy, like the easiest Stevie Ray song mm-hmm. you could. And he was getting yeah. off time. And, Time. It was just funny to me. We talked it up for a while, and, but just couldn't feel. No. Yeah. So, but we we auditioned Zach right after that. Yeah, guys. Just since I started doing this podcast, and I've had Ross and Abe and um, Newell. Yeah. Yeah. Ross Newell that dude's and amazing. Just getting into this mobile sound. I lived down here six years, man, and uh, I didn't. I didn't realize, like, I was right in the midst of it. You know, I'd go to a show every now and then. I was like, you leave Mobile, and then you start listening to Mobile, and you're like, there's a lot of good sound down here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so as the strays got rolling, um, what did that, that locality look like? Is it Was it uh, Soul Kitchen? What were some of those local venues you were hitting? And then as you got out on the road. Brickyard and Callahan's was, was Yeah. Callahan's was what really kind of started the whole gathering. It Every time we'd play there, it, 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 the crowd would seem to double. And we've been told by uh, we've been told by a couple of bar owners, a couple of venue owners, uh, that we kind of not, not not started, but we picked up the pace with the whole music scene because we were, you know, we were playing every week in Mobile. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, twice a week, two or least, three times a week. At least twice a week, man. Yeah, and, you know, just hitting it as hard as we can. For yeah. the most part, growing a crowd every time we played. Yeah. Sometimes we'd have empty shows in Mobile, but for the most part, yeah, the crowd grew every time. And mm-hmm. That in Floribama. Floribama was really big for yeah, us. Yeah, Floribama, it's not really in Mobile, but that's really where we grew as mm-hmm. a band. We mm-hmm. grew a fan base and yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, got a bunch of likes on Facebook and everything. We used to play Floribama a lot. Yeah. yeah. And so just, I guess, is like maybe younger bands just trying to get out, like as you tried to spread wings and get out of town, like what did that look like? Man, we started, uh, Andrew had actually bought an Acadia. Get some, man. Yeah. That's Southern Comfort. That's from Nebraska. <laughs> that's not Southern Comfort. That's just got back from there. That's, that's, an, that's, that's an old fashioned. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an, an old, old fashioned. fashioned. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, we, that's, uh, Nebraska. That's a little memo. Strays. Strays. Boom. Hard. Um, what was I saying? Talking about getting out on the road. Man, we really, we just played anywhere. Yeah, Anywhere took, that would have us. We took yeah. every gig we could, even yeah. if it was for free. Me and Andy sat down the label. We had just signed on to a new label. And they were like, you guys need to get out on the road. And we're like, okay, where do we need to go? And uh, we, me and Andy, our bass player, just sat down for like two nights and just called every venue from here to, we tried to make it all the way to Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. So we got about four gigs out of it. And we <laughs> played... I can't remember where we played in between. We played like Little Rock uh, at this place called Cregan's. <laughs> and <laughs> we were just this new band nobody gave a shit about. And they were like, uh, we were loading in through their kitchen and they were like, all like, because <sighs> it was a Monday night and they just didn't want us there. And they were like, you guys aren't going to be loud, are you? <laughs> yeah. They, they were just, they were probably, they were just complaining literally the whole time while we were setting up. So we were just like, I guess we're gonna play this and just see how it goes. And uh, they ended up. It was an Irish bar, and they were like, "Hey, man, are you guys busy St. Patty's Day?" Yeah. <laughs> we were like, "Yeah, I think yeah, we yeah, are." Yeah, we're busy, you know? man. Yeah. I took my schedule. Yeah. Let my people get back with your people. And then we played at this place called the Blue Door in Oklahoma City, which is a really, really nice venue. And uh, we had like, we four, had, like people. four people there. Yeah. One of them being one of my dad's best friends from high school, and a couple of his friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, Andrew, that's what I was going to. Andrew bought that little Acadia. It was like a, a two row, a two row uh, SUV. Mm-hmm. And we just loaded up in that, hooked our trailer up to it, and uh, just struck out pretty much. Yeah, we blew that thing up, man. Head gasket blew, by the, you know, maybe. Pulling that trailer around. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have the bus, so we were just, just blew it. 
Where did it happen at? Was y'all out of town? Oh, we were back in town by okay. the time that yeah. happened, yeah. He but said it, was, it started running kind of funny. Yeah, it was from the road wear. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, made definitely. it die. Love I got you. I know it's hard to project with all the COVID stuff right now, and y'all still got uh, two more shows after this one in Bama, right? Birmingham mm-hmm. and Huntsville. Yep. Yep. Um, um, Zydeco and Sidetrack. I mean, just, like, it's hard to call on a special that we're, looks like we might go back to phase one, but um, just for folks listening, like, um, anything that you could possibly announce, like, for the future. Uh, new music or new new places that you well, will be at. Well, we were this week. We were actually supposed to go up and finish our EP, and uh, one of the producer's family or something got COVID or got tested positive for no, COVID. His house sitter. It, it was a weird situation. His house sitter uh, is in a band, which is his nephew, and his, two of those his house sitter's band members have COVID, and so now he might have COVID, and he's been around them, so they're all. They're like quarantining the whole house, I believe. Yeah. And the yeah. studio's underneath the house. So. It's in his garage in Nashville. I mean, that's kind of how it was tonight. I had a couple friends uh, from Fuller. They were coming up tonight for the show. And uh, they called me this morning and said, uh, you still going? I said, yeah. I said, uh, we ain't going to be able to make it. We all got COVID. Damn. Oh, I no. said, we went out to celebrate our buddy's 30th last weekend. And somebody there had to not be feeling good and went out anyway. And it was like, yeah. we're all suffering from it now. Jeez, Damn. man. Mm-hmm. It's scary. Yep. yep. Potentially scary. I mean, I've got, I don't know, you don't know what's right or wrong anymore, yeah. according to the media. It's hard to but, tell, um, According to what I've read, I mean, people in high risk are like older older folks and people with like predispositionary lung diseases. And right. I've got asthma. I don't know if that would hurt me or not. but oh, Probably. <laughs> That's a respiratory thing. Yeah. For sure. But. Well, I'm, we're being careful tonight. Like we're passing out masks. Like we made redneck ass masks, and uh, we're gonna be here. yeah. Hail <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> bandana. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The mask ordinance goes in place. Covid danas. Yeah, I, I went to a couple places today. I didn't see anybody wearing a fucking masks. Yeah, I haven't seen a whole lot of it but today. Myself. Maybe one or two people, but you, you normally see one or two people anyways. Yeah. I don't know how they're gonna enforce that. I don't either. Not down here. They're not gonna let them in tonight if they don't wear it. Yeah. Really. Is that what they said? I mean, that's that's the law at this point. I don't know. Once you get in, I mean, it's it's like a venue, so I mean, there's gonna be people buying drinks. You know, it's yeah, like you're yeah, to cut a hole in so it. So part of part of the or, <laughs> part of the ordinance that I read was that if you're eating in the act of eating or drinking, you don't have to wear it. Okay. So I feel like if you just have it, I if feel you're like six, I'm always in the act. Well, yeah, cause, yeah. Couldn't you just keep a bottle of water on you then and be like, oh, oh shit, I'm in the Stay act. Stay strapped. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I yes. got, I, I got one in my back pocket, but. I'm not gonna wear one on stage. No, oh, no, 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 I can't sing like that, bro. Just... All right, happier thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Happy thoughts. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, guys, just uh, you know, just back to the band and like um, finding that sound. I guess it was kind of already there with the previous band, and then adding in Zach and um, the dr- uh, new drummer. It, it wasn't really there. We didn't have sound. Yeah, we didn't really have a sound. We were just we didn't know what we were doing. Still we don't really know what we're doing right now. Yeah, we're just getting a little bit closer to it. Oh, uh, I know. Uh, when John auditioned, Andrew and John locked in, you know, on the first song, first note. That was kind of the, that was really the start of it. Uh, they we all, we actually auditioned John with a uh, an original of ours he had never heard before, mm-hmm. and uh, you know Andrew and John played it perfectly. As far as like the bass player and the drummer goes, they hit all, hit all the pauses together and. They did a good job. He did a good job with it. So I think that that was a really big part is just having that tight of a of a rhythm section like the drums and the bass being being together as tightly as they were. Oh yeah, you don't talk about that enough, really. It's like that's two key. It's it's great to have a damn good lead guitarist and a singer, but uh, that the meat and taters, ba- yeah, the yeah. bass and percussion, it's yeah, the backbone, man. Yeah, that's what's that's what makes people move anyway. Yeah, that's what everybody yep. sits on, man. It's it's just the the rock we're all sitting yeah. on. That's it. Well, guys, outside of music, uh, what are some favorite things that you do, like uh, that might go into the songwriting or just whatever you do when uh, you need to just take time away from the world? I really don't do anything other than music, man. Mm. Yeah, this is it, huh? I just yeah. listen to Skinner yeah. and Wayne play and guitar. Yeah. think about life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. We don't have any hobbies or anything. No. Andy's got fishing. He, yeah, he's a very yeah. avid fisher. Fish. Very, pretty good. Like, yeah. Really enjoys it. Likes his... He's got a badass fish tank that he he made. 
that uh, he likes taking care of. But I yeah. think we're kind of all in a, in a point right now that we're strictly you know, we're just focusing on one thing and one thing only. You know, it's, the music. Yeah, yeah. We don't really. I feel like if I if I had a hobby, you know, and and doing a, a bunch of other stuff, it's just wasting time at this point. Yeah. yeah. It's all about the grind, man. Yeah, we got the blinders focused on. You know what we want to do. Man. It's not even a grind. It's just that we love to do it so yeah, much. So we people call we it the grind. Choose, but yeah, I love even the worst parts yeah. of it, man. Yeah, we yeah. just choose. We'd just rather be doing nothing else than playing at home or you know writing. I mean, I have I've been kind of in a dry spell writing lately. So then, just work on guitar. You know. Yeah, I bet that. I bet that's got to be kind of a weird thing with every kind of shut down. You know, um, just having conversations with musicians right now. It's like. You gotta be kind of hitting your, hitting your spot right now. No, not really. Not for me yeah. anyway. It's that's uh, you know, playing. What I found out through all this, and I kind of already knew it, but it's just very. It kind of reassured it. But playing is quite therapeutic. Mm-hmm. Extremely. Um, just being in front of a crowd. That's why I, I got sick of those live streams. Yeah. Uh, just playing by myself. Being in front of a crowd is the, is the whole reason I do it. Uh, yeah. You know, just entertaining someone. We were just sitting, up, sitting alone, or you know, sitting with the camera people doing the live streams, and it's just, it's not the same. No, no you, you're playing for a phone or a camera, you know. You yeah. Can, you can't, you can't feel the crowd. We I went mean, up, we went up to Birmingham and played one more live stream, and I, after that, I was like, guys, I'm not doing yeah, any more of these. I, was, <laughs> yeah. I think we were all done. Yeah, Let me. I mean, they, they went well, and we were super thankful for the people who were, who were able to give us uh, tips and everything like that. But man, it's. Just, we didn't want to do it anymore, you know. Yeah. I think it, it might have been Abe. We were, we were talking about the, just the live stream and just the way that music is right now. And that, that was his thought. He was like, even even for fans of music and people who like music, he said, when it comes to a point, after you've done it so many times, you're pretty much preaching to the choir mm-hmm. at this point. You're yeah. not you're not reaching anybody. No, you're not going to yeah. make a fan out of this. It's, it's just a video at yeah. the end of the day. It's not like going to the show. That's where a fan's made mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. so what about this for your songwriting and just I, you know that thing you're talking about it's just reassuring it's like a lot of people will say like just uh, that constant grind and staying on the road is uh, uh, not only therapeutic like you said but it also is the most creative times mm-hmm. exactly, yeah. those between the shows on the road that's where a song idea comes from yeah mm-hmm. seeing new stuff yeah. being out of town you know, breaking down. <laughs> Making new stories. Man. Making new stories. Yeah, yeah. That's where it all comes from. What uh what's some of your favorite moments from just being on the road? <laughs> oh, man. I mean the first what one of what you could share. <laughs> I mean the, I, the first one we could think of was the bus fire. <laughs> yeah. I don't broke, know. If, we've broken down quite a bit in our bus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh we we blew a turbo out in Kansas City, Missouri. And uh had to cancel a bunch of shows, go on Facebook and they're like, hey guys, we still broke down. We were stuck up there for like three days. Um, we got this Craigslist mechanic to come help us. Yeah. And he really did help us out a lot. And uh, he had hooked the turbo back up, but the turbo the turbo bolts into the exhaust, or it it hooks up to the exhaust, and there's a clamp that holds it, the turbo and the exhaust together, mm-hmm. a little circular clamp. And uh, he bought we got the new turbo, but he didn't buy a new clamp. And uh, our old clamp didn't fit the new turbo. And so this guy takes exhaust tape and wraps it around the turbo and the exhaust, just wraps it up. He's like, all right, y'all good to go. <laughs> and we got on the road and uh, started to leave and we blew up. We got about 30 minutes outside of Kansas City and it, man, that bus was so loud because the exhaust wasn't hooked up properly. Yeah. We were probably blowing exhaust inside the cabin too. Oh, we were for sure, man. Definitely. We yeah. probably would have died. But, um, <laughs> We had a CO2 sensor that didn't work. No, we took the so batteries out because the beeping was it annoying. It just kept beeping. But we got, out, we got outside Kansas City and blew a coolant <laughs> hose and Jeez. lost all of our coolant. Yeah. And so we called the mechanic again. I was like, hey, man, we, can you think you can drive 30 minutes up the road and come get us? We blew a hose out. So he came and got us. And we were like, that, that exhaust job you did is not working out, man. It's that little gap right there, yeah. that's not working out. So he, he, takes, he finds a piece of wood on the side of the road and cuts it. And him and John, by the way, yeah, John, John was in on this. John held the wood for him. He he uh <laughs> he cut it into like the shape of a wedge, and wedged it down and like pushed the exhaust against the turbo. 
with this piece of wood back here and just hammered it down in there and, and wedged the exhaust against the turbo and rewrapped it with the exhaust tape again. And uh, we got to going down the road. He's like, and he, he, I said, Joe, I think that wood might catch on fire. It's against the exhaust pipe. And he's like, no, man, that's treated wood. It's not going to catch on fire. <laughs> and we got to going down the road. And by this time, it was night time. <laughs> Bless you. At this time, it was uh, night. And uh, we were smelling that wood. And it went from like a burn. It smelled kind of like a fireplace. Yeah. Just the burning wood smell. And then it turned into a burning plastic. And I was like, yeah, we're on fire. So. <laughs> Pull over on the side. We pull over on the side of the road. Shut the bus off. And take the lattice off of the doghouse. Pull the doghouse off. And when we pull the doghouse off, it just lit the whole bus up with an orange tent mm -hmm. from the fire. And Andrew grabbed the fire extinguisher and just went to spraying. Jeez. We filled the whole <coughs> bus up with the fire extinguisher dust. Got the fire out though. And it was just Is just the bus the wood. still still a thing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's back there. <laughs> we'll, we'll show you after, man. <laughs> it still works, mm -hmm. barely. We bought it for like forty five hundred. <coughs> Bless you. But mm. uh, you know, we we've made so many repairs on it. We're well over twenty grand in it now. Mm. Been quite the investment. Though. Well, they were talking about our fans have started talking about, hey, let's uh let's start another GoFundMe and buy the strays another bus, a newer bus. And we got on there and we was like, guys, we we've, we've already done so much work with this one. It's kind of attached. <laughs> yeah, it's like we know what's been fixed on this one. We've got a new transmission, a new turbo, new alternator, new air compressor. I mean, we're, it'd be it. We'd have to start all over if we bought another bus. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's running pretty good now. We were stuck there for three days and just got loaded on really bad tequila. The worst tequila. <sighs> Zach was drooling at one point. Yeah. It was really. Really great. <laughs> I can't hardly even smell tequila no more <laughs> without, without even getting queasy, man. Yeah. I had a real bad experience. I was, uh, it was a spring break, I think. Yeah. And that was the end of that. That was it. Yeah. Never I again. just now started liking tequila again, which well, might be a dangerous thing. I've always loved tequila. I've hated it up until I've recently. I've like never wavered for a moment. <laughs> even, even after that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, let's talk a little bit just about like just the mobile area um, with the music scene. Um, who are some of your favorite guys in this area? Just to talk talk up the area. Abe well, Partridge. Abe Partridge, that uh, is one of the best songwriters ever, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I think he'll be up there with like Towns Van Zant and like all those dudes. By the end of it, I mean he's just a, he's a he's like a true artist by every definition. Mm -hmm. um, Garrett Howell. Garrett Howell. He's a badass. That dude doesn't know how amazing he is. Yeah. He's an incredible songwriter, incredible vocalist, incredible guitar player. I mean, he, yeah. That dude is so full. Yeah. Yeah. Great, yeah. great guy, too, man. Yeah, I love him, man. Yeah, he's been on the show. Yeah. Um, I would. My girlfriend. <laughs> she plays. I she's was going to bring it up if you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Lori Ann Armour. She's, uh, she's an incredible songwriter, an incredible soul beautiful i'm biased though <laughs> any other plugs y'all can think of <sighs> hmm nick urban eric urban nick urban yeah that dude is one of the best songwriters i mean that if, if you want to talk about a proficient songwriter somebody who's studied and knows the ins and outs and actual like if you wanted like a college professor around here who was a songwriter teach you songwriting in college or something like that it'd mm -hmm. be eric urban I've learned so much from that guy and doing co-writes with him. Now, he's a guy hard to catch up with, ain't he? Because he stays on the road. Yeah. He stays gone. Mm -hmm. uh, probably not now, but... Yeah. I mean, everywhere. Anywhere and everywhere. He'll take flights all the time, and, you know... Uh, he's, he's just... And he makes good money doing it. I mean, he plays he plays for Buddy Rich's band as a guitar player in that. Mm -hmm. And that's... That's saying something. That's saying something, yeah. <laughs> if you're playing guitar for Buddy Rich's big band, then you're doing pretty good. He's got a, like a, a new show coming out. Whenever COVID's over with, he was supposed to have this new series that they were going to do. I forget the name of it, but it was going to be on, on TV, like on actual television. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's awesome. Guys, anything else uh, you want to plug or talk about? No, I mean I can't think. Of I can't think of anything. We got the EP coming out eventually. It's hard. It's hard to say anything for sure. Yeah, because you don't know where things are going. Even even shows. I mean, 
like yesterday we just lost what two or three shows two or three yeah. festivals yeah. yesterday just yesterday so. in Texas for me. yeah we lost to Texas we're Texas supposed to be going to Texas at the end of the month but that, that's no longer happening so it's hard to say anything yeah. for sure you know yeah. yeah keep your faith we're not gonna lose faith no not at all you know we're just yeah. waiting on the world to stop falling apart we're just five best friends playing music yeah and we enjoy right. playing it with each other so we're gonna be fine you know I've seen we've seen some people back out and quit and that ain't happening. That's not us. No. Well, guys, you want to walk it out with one more song? You play one. I played one. What did you play? Play better, sweet. Okay. What do you want to do, Brandon? I'll do uh, wondering why. I got a pick. Thanks, Zach. You want to trade? Because this one's a little bit more flexy. <laughs> you want to trade guitars, too? Do you want to trade guitars? Yeah, why not? Okay. I feel like your little run will be better on the dobro. If you say so. I might need a tender. It's close enough. Yeah, it's close enough. This song's called Wondering Why. It'll be released God knows when. It's, it's, been, it's been recorded and everything. Just gotta wait on. It's one of our favorite ones that we recorded, actually. Mm -hmm. She comes from Silver Spoon, Golden Rule, private school, never miss Sunday church. And I come from blue collar, low dollar, out here where concrete meets old red dirt. And I don't know what happened, but it sure don't add up on paper. When I close my eyes late at night, you can bet I thank my maker. She keeps on loving me, loves me the way I am. She's not just alone for the ride. She's my biggest fan And it's a little piece of heaven When we lay down at night She keeps on loving me And I keep on wondering why She's got a wicked smile Angel eyes Every guy wanting to hold her close as pretty as sin like the sun sinking down on the California coast. She keeps on loving me, loves me the way I am. She's not just alone for the ride, no, she's my biggest fan. And it's a little piece of hell when we lay down at night but She keeps on loving me And I keep on wondering why But it sure don't add up on paper As long as she lets me I'll take her wherever she wants me to take her She keeps on loving me Loves me the way I am She's not just alone for the ride No, she's my biggest fan It's a little piece of heaven when we lay down at night. She keeps on loving me. I keep on wondering why. She keeps on loving me, and I keep on wondering why.
this. Uh, I didn't even ask this. Um, just one more before we go. Okay. Uh, just your songwriting process, and I'm sure uh, it's it's hard to do because each song's a little bit different. Oh, nice. But uh, I guess if you want to take that particular song, uh, just like, what was that process like going into it? Just well, um, so our management also doubles, or really what their main job is, they're uh, publishers. They have their own publishing company separately, and uh, so what they do is they set us up with different songwriters up in Nashville, uh, different PRO places like BMI or ASCAP or whatever, and uh, so on that one, <clears throat> we met up with this dude named uh, Dan Couch at, uh, at I forget, SNG Music, and uh, we uh, just started writing with him. I mean, he, he wrote, if you've ever heard the song Something About a Truck, he wrote that one for uh, whoever that was. Kip Moore. Kip Moore. Yeah, and uh, he writes a lot for Cody Johnson, so he's, he's got a lot of good cuts. And uh, So we went in there with him, and we came out with this. Just wanted to write a pretty, pretty good love song, and um, I guess I was... In the process of it, I was thinking about love and how what I have for Lorianne and how I don't deserve her and how we don't deserve our women because we're just a bunch of rednecks trying to play music and they're they're good people with yeah. good values and not that we don't have good values but uh, that's pretty much how that went. We just went in there and wrote it with them and uh, came out with it and we were happy with it and presented it to the band and we just worked it up a couple of days. I mean, didn't take long at all. It was pretty, from the get-go, we pretty much had it down. Seems like most of the good ones just come yeah. quick. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like those lightning in the bottom moments, ain't it? Yeah. Just kind of gets struck. Well, we had one song called Till Things Get Right that Brandon literally pulled out of his rear end on stage one time, which we were <laughs> like, all right, let's do it, man. It, it seems easy enough. And that way that we had it, we played it at Brickyard the first time that we ever played it. And uh, that way that we played it that night is almost exactly the same way that we play it now. So usually we kind of stick with what we got. Mm -hmm. But if we don't like it, then we'll, you know, we'll work it up for a couple days or a whole day or something like that and figure it out then. But that's yeah, pretty much it. It's either at a, a co-write or a Drew will write a song or Matthew will write a song. Yeah. And uh, we just, you know, pick a song. Well, I got plenty of songs from between Drew and Matthew, and just pick one and then show up and work it out. Yeah, I try to I try to usually think about, you know, a kind of an idea of where I want the song to go, or whatever ideas I have for it, and we just get together and uh, start with the basics, you know, the drum beat and uh, stuff like that, the bass the bass line, and we just start playing it. Even if we got to play one verse at a time and get that down, and then play it some more. But yeah, we can spend five or six hours working a song up easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it uh? Do those songs ever feel finished until you get it out into a crowd and feel it out live for the first time? They never feel finished. Yeah, feel yeah. Finished. that that is a good way to test them though. Mm -hmm. Usually, yeah. We you know we get it. We write a new song. We think we think we like it, and then get out and play it in front of a crowd, and nobody really pays attention to it. It's probably not the one. Huh? Yeah. Or just rework that one. If we like just it enough, it. just rework it. You yeah. know. Because we're going to do what we like to do. Because yeah. you. Yeah, we're us. <laughs> well, guys, thank you all so much for taking the time. Ready yeah, for man. the show tonight. Definitely. And uh, that's going to do it for us here. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank you. Cool, man. News and notes. Thank you so much for listening to Porch Talk. If you haven't done so already, I would ask you to rate and review the show on whatever podcast app it is that you listen to on. Now, follow the strays on their social media Instagram and Facebook, Alabama, in Birmingham on the 10th of July, this Friday. You can catch them at Zydeco's. If you should miss that, and if you were to just live a little bit further north or willing to make this drive, Sidetracks in Huntsville, you can catch them there again on the 11th. Now, Follow their uh, Instagram and Facebook. You can see Matt, one of the guys they have involved doing the songwriting. You can also see 
that Drew has an event coming up on his birthday in August to where he's going to play the listening room. And also, Drew's girlfriend, Laurie, just put an album out. I suggest you go check that out. And I'm going to get on out of your hair. Hey, thank y'all so much for listening to the show. Till next time, peace out.